Hey everyone, this is my 2016 Shelby GT350. We're gonna be changing the fuel filter today. Uh, the car has close to 50,000 miles, so this is overdue. Ford recommends to do it every 30,000 miles, and uh, I wanted to show you guys how to do it. By the way, this is a warm start. The car had already been idling for a little while before this, but the car has Lone Racing's tune. Um, it's on E85R tune. Other than that, you know, the car just has a little bit of exhaust work and it's pretty much stock. Uh, the car is very, very fun and reliable. This is the way I like it. I mean, I, I'm not one of those guys that just lets their 350 sit in the garage. Car obviously gets driven. It's got, if this thing can focus, 53,108 miles on it now. And I mean, I, I, I have fun with it. I take it on uh, road courses. Uh, uh, I take it on back roads. I take it for autocross events and the car is very very reliable I am not looking to boost the car anytime soon or even boost the car. I've had boosted GTs before and Although the horsepower game is fun and all I mean you can't beat reliability and About 500 wheel horsepower on this car. So it's it's plenty for uh, having fun, you know So, okay, there's a lot of things that I would like to talk about in this video, but I think the car deserves its own video so that I can show you guys everything that's been done to the car. Um, I mean, it's not much, but just little things that help it with, obviously, cooling. I've done those um, track louvers, but whatever. I mean, I'll talk about the car in another video, um, just talking about all the mods I've done to it. But I have the part number and the filter right here. Um, come on, focus. All right. So I got it from OEC Ford, the dealer. It ran me about $50. This is the part number. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how it looks. It's just a little canister filter built in. You can't really even see the filter. It's all sealed. But this is it right here. Focus. Sorry guys, this thing is not running to fall. Uh, anyways, this is the filter and then it also has a little arrow somewhere, oh right here. Okay, it has a little arrow pointing up. The filter has a circ circle or circular uh, end and which is going to be pointing to the back side of the car and the arrow obviously is going to be flowing with the flow of the uh, of the gas. So. It's gonna go like so. The filter on the car now, it's going to be directly underneath your, uh, I guess your feet, if you're the driver, right underneath here. So the first thing we gotta do is we're gonna jack it up, support it, and go from there. Okay, so just to show you guys real quick, <clears throat> I've obviously got it supported, I don't wanna die, but this is gonna be your, um, cover I mean plastic cover and it's just held in by some bolts and and some um, rivets so basically you just get uh, some pliers I believe this is gonna be like a 8 or a 10 millimeter so you just get you know whatever fits and uh, unloose this one you're gonna get under here here's another one that looks to be a torch bit Here's another 8 or 10 millimeter. I can't really, I don't really know what it is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you just work your way. You don't have to do all of them. Uh, the ones that you're going to want to do is going to be this one. Uh, possibly, there's another one up here. You're going to want to do that one. Because the filter, for my understanding, is going to be somewhere over here in the front side. So there's no need to be worrying about anything back there. So, um, 
just go ahead and undo these three or four and you should have enough space to be able to get underneath and get that out. So guys, I lied to you. The filter, I already taken off the ones that I needed to take off, but the filter, and it was a 10 millimeter, the filter is actually not up here. It's gonna be back here. So you pull this down and there it is right there. Um, I'm not gonna bore you guys with taking it off. Just make sure that whenever you do take it off, you take these clips off. Um, you put a rag or something over it because there's a lot of fuel that is gonna come out of there because it's all pressurized right now. So you gotta make sure that you um, get a rag or something on, on top of it that way it doesn't get all over you. So. so if you know about fuel lines and fuel stuff, anything fuel related, you know that that shit is gonna leak for like five minutes straight and you don't know where the fuel is coming from but this thing leaked out like crazy so make sure you got a lot of you know rags handy ready to clean everything up but oh it's still leaking damn okay so this is the old part we're about to put the new one in it was kind of a pain in the ass to get it out because you know in the you know they don't tell you this but there is a little eight millimeter there's something holding this around like this there's a little eight millimeter you gotta get that loose in order to get this guy out and then we're gonna put the new one in um, here I'll just go ahead and show you guys what I'm talking about it's gonna be a little plastic um, holder which is that guy right there so that has a eight millimeter holding it onto the body and a, I'm sorry eight millimeter tightening it 10 millimeter holding onto the body. You don't gotta get that guy out, but as long as you loosen up the eight millimeter, you'll be able to get the filter out. So we're gonna just swap the new one in, put the fuel lines back in, in place, and tighten everything up. One thing I've always liked, call me weird, but is every time I jack up the car, that tire. I mean, god damn, it's so fat, but uh, I got three 15s and 305s in the front with our replica wheels because I think they look badass. Anyways, uh, what you're gonna wanna do now is lower the car and prime it because you know we just disconnected a fuel line, so obviously we gotta let fuel get it back into the new filter. And you don't wanna, I mean, it would have really hurt the motor, but you never know. So. Better safe than sorry. <clears throat> oh shit, okay. So, we the way you prime it is you press it once and then let it about well, five seconds. Press it again one more time. It should already be primed, but and then you start it up. You want a smooth idle. I mean, have you had any issues? Check for leaks. No leaks. So we're good. And that's how you change the filter on a Shelby GT350, GT500, they're all the same. So I don't know if the Coyotes have this thing. I've never heard of it, but you know, uh, every 30,000 miles, if you want to do it sooner, it wouldn't hurt. I run the 85 on the car, so I'm always pumping gas. The more gas it sees, the more the, the dirtier it'll get faster. So yeah, that's how you do it. Hope you guys enjoy. And I almost forgot to mention, uh, yes, I want to make a separate video just talking about the car itself. I wanna talk about all the mods that I've done to it. You know, I'm not a, one of those guys that likes to do everything on the car. I, I'm a very simple guy as far as when it comes to mods for the cars I don't like to stand out uh, as much you know wheels tires lowering springs and I think in my opinion that's all you really need especially on these cars they're beautiful uh, it's been my dream car for man 2014 I've actually had this poster since late 2014 my dad got it for me because he knew how much I liked the Shelby's, uh, especially the 350. And yeah, my girlfriend gave me this guy, this guy, 
and we put up that wall up there um, this I thought this will be pretty cool to show shout out to BFS <laughs> uh, but anyways um, this is the dyno graph um, at a what is it is a dyno jet so I mean I don't know how high or low it reads but I did three pulls first pull I made focus first pull it made 494 495 and 495 so very consistent numbers torque was about 420 and I mean I'm very satisfied that was during summer heat and very very humid here in Houston so it's not too bad I chose number 77 um, and Cam C is the uh, uh, they I don't know what you call it but the category that I run whenever I go do autocross and 77 because it's 7 is my favorite number and I didn't like how just the 7 looked I wanted to have two numbers so it looks good like that um, yeah and this is uh, my garage and stay tuned for the next video coming on the Shelby talking about all the mods that I've done to it and future plans for the car Nick Schneider can't see clock number 17.